Well, while homeschooling can be beneficial for some students, parents do face a dilemma. Individually, they simply do not have the same financial resources a large school district does. But there is a solution a growing number of homeschool families are taking advantage of, which is where our Lisa Hines picks up the story. Currently, close to 400 homeschool students attend any one of the 57 career tech campuses around the state. We caught up with a couple of these students taking advantage of the high tech offerings at their local technology center. These shapes were uh, shapes that we created ourselves. For homeschooler Jacob Pierce, the Pre-Engineering Academy at Francis Tuttle Tech Center provides him with an opportunity to do what he loves. I initially started out pre-engineering because uh, I heard the math and science here. And uh, I'm, I, I like math, um, and so I, I initially that's why I started out. But as I got to doing it, I found it actually, it took math and science and put life applications to it where you could actually go into a career where you use those every day. Learning skills in a positive atmosphere. I really like it because you're around other people who are raised on a higher level um, of education who want to actually go beyond just what you get normally from high school or what I'd get normally at home school. You get to take AP classes. One thing I like here is the teachers here. They come before school, after school, stay during the lunch breaks, and they're, they're able to help you if you have problems. And uh, they all have engineering backgrounds. Uh, it's not just a teacher who got an education degree and wants to try to figure out what engineering is to teach you, but they actually have been engineers so they know what that is. Across town, fellow homeschooler Abigail Jebaraj says Francis Tuttle's Biomed Academy was a turning point for her. I actually found out about the Academy going to a homeschool convention. They had a table set up there with pre-engineering and medicine, so I got to go there and l learn a little bit about the academies. That was when my hard choice had to happen, whether I was going to go into engineering or medicine. And Abigail chose medicine. I would say it's definitely more specialized because this academy is for pre-med students. We're all very focused. We're all, since we had to apply and be interviewed, we're all the best of the best. So we all want to be here. We all want to do our best in that we all encourage each other in order to pursue a career in medicine. An education that for both is taking them to college. I'm planning on going to Oklahoma State University and uh, double majoring in aerospace and mechanical engineering. I plan to go to the University of Oklahoma in the fall. And I will be in the Medical Humanities Scholars Program, which is a selective program for students interested in, in the medicine field. This academy has really prepared me for college, I believe. Being able to go into interviews, being confident, talking about what I know scientifically, mathematically, and also uh, professionally. Putting these homeschool students on a pathway to success. Now for all high school students, including the homeschool students, to attend any one of the career techs, it will cost them zero dollars. Now some homeschool students are using their local tech centers for more than just class. They're actually learning to build functioning robots. And at this year's state robotics competition, a group of homeschool students qualified to compete at the world competition in St. Louis. So we gave them a camera and here's what they brought back. It's a basketball game unlike any other. The players, student-built robots from a team of Oklahoma homeschool students. This is a very unique team because obviously most of the students and our, our homeschool kids. Learning at home, but competing against students from some of the best science and math schools in the country. My name is Kermit Alexander II, uh, 15 years old, ninth grade. This is my third year robot. Well, it's fun because I like programming and uh, Program with robots gives a lot of different challenges over programming with a PC. There's a lot of different things that you do have to think about compared to when you're programming with a PC. You see a lot of different interesting challenges and constraints when you're programming a robot. Stepping outside their books to stand behind a robot is exactly what these homeschool students have done. We're kind of unusual compared to most of the teams around here. We're associated with 4-H. 4-H is wanting to get out of the stereotype of being plows and cows and sows. They're wanting to get into the, into the uh, city. And, uh, and get into science, technology, engineering, and math. And by all indication, they're there. As first thing I have to have a strategy about how you want the, pro the uh, robot to work in hospital in general. And then basically what you have to do next is translate that to the programming language you're using. It's not that hard, but most of the problems are from that translation step. That's pretty much all there is to it. Sounds easy, right? 
my name is Bryce Gifford. I'm nice. I'm in the ninth grade. I'm 15 years old, and I've done robots for this is my second year. I do robots for for, for bettering engineering, science, and technology, and for scholarships. While some people may think robotics is only a competition, this homeschool team believes it is much, much more. While we are here building a robot, we're also here trying to form leaders. And we'll spend the whole off season working on each kid individually, trying to get them to that point. So maybe they can graduate, go out into the world, and really be successful. Students building a future for tomorrow, one robot at a time. Now talking to their coach, the Ninja Monkeys are gearing up for another robotics season by taking more AutoCAD, electronics, and metal fabrication classes.